Hey gang, it's Rob with Japan Anime Games. I'm going to teach you how to play the Tanto Kawari series. Tanto Kawari is a deck building card game with maids. Your goal is to be the best at managing your maids and earn more victory points than your opponents. I have chosen Tanto Kawari Romantic Vacation as it's my favorite, but this video will teach you the basics of playing any Tanto Kawari game. To begin, turn to the setup and terminology page. It's page 2 in the Romantic Vacation rulebook. As you can see, I have already set up the town. I've chosen the default setup in the book, but you can set it up any way you want after your first game. That's what's great about Tonto. The only thing that you need to have in every game is three love piles, a Beatrice pile, a Sophia pile, and ten general maid piles. Also leave four slots open for reminisce cards. Right around there. We'll get to that later. Keep in mind what version you are playing as it changes setup. Cards in Tanto Kawari always have a title, card name, employ cost, victory points, draw, love, serving, employment, ability, and flavor text. For right now, we just need to keep in mind the basics, which is namely, employ cost, draw, love, serving, and employment. We'll be able to get to the rest later, but in order to get started with Tonto, these are the only things that you need to know right off the bat. Tanto Kawari is a deck building card game. That means we build a deck of cards as we play, attempting to score more points than our opponents by buying the most efficient cards. In Romantic Vacation, you start with an opening hand of 7 Love and 3 Beatrice. I shuffle the deck, then begin the game by drawing 5 cards. Let us begin our first turn. In my opening hand of five cards, I have drawn four one love cards and one Beatrice. Now, I will use love to employ maids to work at my mansion. I can right now employ any maid that costs four love or less. Keep in mind, you only start each turn with one employ. I am going to buy one margarita from the town, losing my one love left over. It doesn't transfer over to the next turn. The margarita will then go from the town into my discard pile, as she has been purchased and cannot be used this turn. Let's take a look at Beatrice, however, since she's the last card remaining in my hand. She doesn't look like she does a whole lot, and she has something called the chambermaid effect on her card. But let's not worry about her right now, and just realize that she's useless in our hand in the early game. So, once again, that means that all of our love goes into the discard next to our deck face up, as well as our Beatrice that we didn't use, and our new maid. Now, I draw five new cards, and my turn ends going over to my opponent's turn. Now we are going to learn how to play maids. Every turn you have the opportunity to play at least one maid, as every turn you begin with one serving, which is the cost required to play a maid. So I draw my new hand, I have four cards, and a margarita. If I want to play Margarita, all I have to do is use my first serving. It's generally considered appropriate just to play your first maid card that you want to play. It's obvious to everyone what's going on. So, with Margarita, I play her, and she will draw me a card, gain me one serving, which is great because it recoups my lost serving, and gives me one love.
So first I draw my card. And now I have six total love. Six because I have five one love cards and I played Margarita this turn, which also gave me one love. So with my six love, I am going to go to the town and purchase Chlorine to C, who costs six love, gives me two victory points, and has other effects. So, all the cards that I purchased this turn and played go into my discard pile, and I draw five new cards. Remember, even if I didn't play a card, it still goes into my discard at the end of the turn. It's now time that we got back to Beatrice, the card that I said earlier not to worry about. She's appeared in my hand again, and I think we need to do something about her. Beatrice is a chambermaid. We can tell because of her title and because she has a chamber effect. In order to get her out of our deck and into our chamber, we need to satisfy her chamber cost, which on her card is two servings and allows me to chamber Beatrice. So... With my one serving to start, I will play Margarita. I play Margarita, she draws me a card, gains me a love, gains me a serving, and reveals Chlorine C. Chlorine C has uh, a cost of one serving as well all maids do in Tanto Kawari. So, using the one serving I generated from Marguerite, I will play Chlorine C. Chlorine C draws me one card and gets me two servings. What those two servings are going to allow me to do is satisfy the chamber cost of Beatrice, allowing me to chamber her, score her victory points, and remove her from my deck so I don't have to draw her anymore. When a card is chambered, place it somewhere where it's not going to get mixed in with your hand or your discard pile or with another player's deck and keep it off to the side for the rest of the game. On another turn, I think it's now time to explain what happens when you run out of your deck. So, in my turn, let's say, I have a card or a card effect that draws me a card. Or, I end my turn, go to draw my five cards, and there's nothing left. What'll happen is, for this example, I am drawing a card during my turn, is I will take all cards that are in my discard pile shuffle them up, and then draw from there. I don't lose my draw, and I don't get to draw any cards that were played this turn as they have not gone into my discard. So, I now get to shuffle up my deck and draw. It's also a good habit to get into that when you're playing, you might want to shuffle when you know there's no way you can affect it, and you have the time to anyway. Because this is a multiplayer game and you don't want to keep your friends waiting. Now, let's talk about how the game ends. When two cardboard backers at the bottom of card piles are revealed, the game ends and players will tally up their victory points. If you want, you can make games shorter by reducing the amount of made cards in each pile. In our game, for example, we have Beatrice and our Chlorian C each generating us two victory points. You're gonna have a lot more in your game. Reminisce cards are the core mechanic in Tanto Kawari Romantic Vacation. Reminisce cards have a name, victory points, category, requirement, and card effect. Set up your Reminisce cards like I have, randomly flipping three face up. To acquire a Reminisce card, you must discard a combination of cards from your hand specific to the requirement cost. 
Then place the Reminisce card in your chamber and resolve its effect. These cards do not go into your discard pile and they're a one-time use power that often give you victory points as well. In closing, we covered setup, employing maids, playing maids, chambering maids, shuffling your deck, how the game ends, and reminisce. Keep in mind that each edition of Tonto Quarry has a core mechanic specific to that set. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me at sales at japanamegames.com or by sending a message to our Facebook. What was your highest score in Tonto Quarry? And who is your favorite maid? Leave a comment below and let us know. Have a great day, guys.